Hey everyone, today I'll be sharing my experiences with Probstein. I had some of my cards at Probstein that ended yesterday in auction. So we're going to go through each one of those and look at what they sold for compared to the average of recent comps. So stay tuned because there's a lot of cards here from a lot of sports, both raw and graded cards. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe. So let's jump into it. First of all, here's Probstein's rates. Um, all of my cards in this video fall in the lower rates. So 15% is what they, um, what their fee is, which is a little bit higher than eBay. So I'm going to be ignoring the rate factor for this video, um, just so you're aware. So let's just go through these cards. So, um, yeah, so this one went for 50. Average of the last five was 42, so above average there. Above average on this one as well. Justin Herbert Green. Um, this one was below. So as you can see, there's kind of mixed results. They are auctions, so there's a lot of variables that come into play. And the comps are obviously averages, so they aren't the highest sales price that you could theoretically get if you listed your cards at buy it now. Um, here's one that was about on par. A little higher here. I had two of these ones that went for quite a bit higher. Really happy with how these auctions turned out. 41 and 42 compared to $25 for the last five comps average. There's another one that was pretty close. Pretty close there as well. A little under. So these are all raw football so far. These are my grading rejects, which I always send to Probstein. Um, I'll explain why later. This one was nice. Low dollar card, but Propstein gets a lot more eyes on the auctions, so that's an advantage. Another one pretty close. Pretty close. This one only had two comps, but yeah. So here's an example. I sent in a duplicate, and there was a bit of a discrepancy with the sales prices. Um, they were both still higher than the last five comps average, um, but pretty big difference. So it can be a disadvantage to send duplicates you just never really know I find that I never should I never send more than two of one card to Probstein at a time two is the max that I'll do I've tried three before and it doesn't work well another low dollar one there <clears throat> so that one's a little bit above we'll take it a little bit below on this one graded card. So these two I sent, I have a lot of duplicates if you guys remember from a recent PSA reveal that I did. So these ones were each about $10 lower than the last five comps average. So not super ideal, but um, I was able to liquidate them, move on to the next thing. So I'm, I'm happy with it. This one didn't have any comps. This one's out of 199. And the only comp I found was for an out of 49 similar card from the same set, which went for $49. So that was all of the cards I had. Here's the totals. So as you can see, my, my Probstein sales were about $50 higher than the average comps total. So I'm happy with that. Um, We'll move on to some pros and cons now. Kind of my thought process behind consigning with Probstein. So yeah, liquidating cards quickly is a big one. Like if you have a lot of duplicates or if you have cards that have been sitting in your inventory for a while that you just want to get rid of and move on to the next thing, Probstein is great for that. Um, like I mentioned, they get lots of views on auctions. so. For that reason, they often are above average on the sales prices. 
Um, and one of the biggest reasons is it saves time, um, especially with those raw rejects. Um, I, I have a lot of those, especially now I'm kind of ramping things up with grading and with a lot of grading orders comes a lot of rejects. So um, sending these off to Probstein saves time and they get more views than I would be able to get on my eBay. Um, I'm willing to take any potential price differences uh, to save the time often on those raw cards and even some of the graded ones, as you can see. So some of the cons that I've experienced, obviously, like I mentioned, duplicates can be risky, um, both sending your own duplicates and you know, you never know what other people are sending in. If you're sending in super common cards, it's likely that um, eventually you'll hit a, a time where there will be other people's cards of the same player, same set that are competing with yours. Also unknown start and end times. Um, Obviously, Probstein wants to make money off of your auctions, so they'll try their best to optimize the start and end times for auctions, but I've had some that have ended at like midnight and um, not, the, not the greatest results. I think these ones here for this order ended at about 11, uh, 11 Eastern time, so not the best, but could be worse, could be worse. So, like I said, I don't consign all my cards with Probstein. I mainly do raw rejects, duplicates that I get graded that I have a lot of, and other graded cards that I want to liquidate. So, my consensus is if you want to churn through inventory quickly and also save yourself time, Probstein is great for that. Um, if you're not in a rush to sell stuff, you want to get you know, the highest prices you can, then just put them up on, buy it now on your eBay and wait for people to buy them. So anyway, that's my experience with Probstein. Please comment below with any questions you have. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Got lots of cool stuff coming up in regards to PSA and also some changes coming to the Synergy website. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.